World-renowned Harvard University geneticist David Reich has just blown a hole in the outdated idea that humanity evolved in a single cradle in Africa. In a stunning new interview, he declares we have no idea where our ancestors truly came from and challenges the long-held assumption that Africa was somehow isolated from Eurasia, calling it a strange idea, not backed by the scientific or genetic evidence. The period between about 2 million to 500,000 years ago, I think it's not at all clear where the main ancestors leading to modern humans were. There were humans uh, throughout many parts of Eurasia and throughout many parts of Africa with a a parallel increase in brain size and not obviously closer ancestrality to modern humans in one place than in the other. It's not clear where the main lineages were. The idea that, that being in Eurasia or Africa is such a profound barrier that you would not expect people to move from one region to the other in periods of tens of thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years, that's, that's a strange idea. Mm -hmm. Around 650,000 years ago, the Earth entered one of the most hostile phases in its climatic history. The planet shuddered under the grip of marine isotope stage 16, a frigid, dry and prolonged glacial period. Temperatures plunged more than 5 degrees Celsius below today's average, massive ice sheets crept over northern latitudes, and vast swathes of Europe and Asia became uninhabitable. Humanity, or rather the archaic hominins who would give rise to us, faced an unprecedented crisis. This split remains one of the great mysteries of human evolution. We do not know where it happened. We do not know what the last common ancestor looked like. And we are only beginning to understand how those ancient fault lines shaped the destiny of our species. As for where this mysterious ancestor lived, paleoanthropologist Chris Stringer remains open, stating, It could have been in Africa he says, but it could have been in Europe, or it could have been in West Asia. It could even have been in East Asia. We just don't know yet. What emerged from this crucible of climate was not extinction, but divergence. It was during this period that a single ancestral human population appears to have splintered into at least four genetically distinct lineages. From this great rupture would eventually arise the Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo sapiens, and a fourth ghost lineage still hidden in the mists of time, known only from genetic echoes in modern African populations. The timing of this population fracture corresponds with the mid-Pleistocene transition, a sweeping shift in the Earth's glacial rhythms between 900,000 and 600,000 years ago. Before, glacial cycles came and went roughly every 41,000 years. Afterward, they grew longer, deeper, and more catastrophic, lasting up to 100,000 years at a time. The freeze culminated in the brutal marine isotope stage 16, around 676,000 to 621,000 years ago, a period that likely saw the coldest sustained conditions ever experienced by hominins. Africa dried out, with savannas and deserts expanding across what had once been forest, Northern Eurasia and much of Europe were scoured clean of life by glaciers and permafrost. Only a few regions, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Levant, the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, and the island chains of what is known as Sunderland, remained habitable. These were the refugia, the sanctuaries where isolated bands of hominins clung to survival. And from these refugia, four distinct evolutionary trajectories emerged. A compelling lead study challenges the conventional timeline of human evolution by using a new genetic analysis method to reconstruct the early history of archaic human populations. The researchers developed a statistical tool which better accounts for population substructure in the gene pool, allowing for more accurate estimates of divergence times and population sizes. The study, Early History of Neanderthals and Denisovans, investigated the demographic history of Neanderthals and Denisovans using genomic data from modern humans and archaic hominins. The researchers developed a novel method analyzing site frequency patterns in DNA sequences to estimate population sizes, separation times, and admixture events, avoiding biases from whole genome divergence estimates. Contrary to previous beliefs that Neanderthals and Denisovans split relatively late, the team found that these groups diverged from each other about 744,000 years ago, 
just 300 generations after their common ancestor separated from the lineage that led to modern humans. They also proposed that the Neanderthal Denisovan ancestor nearly went extinct before this split, and that Neanderthals later grew into a large, regionally fragmented population across Western Eurasia, likely numbering in the tens of thousands, much larger than past estimates of only around 1,000 individuals. The scientists argue that this revised evolutionary story not only fits the genetic evidence better than older models, but it also provides a more coherent narrative of how archaic humans evolved, diverged, and interacted with one another. Key findings reveal that the common ancestral population of Neanderthals and Denisovans underwent a severe bottleneck, reducing its effective size to approximately 500 to 1,000 individuals, shortly before diverging from the modern human lineage around 744,000 to 603,000 years ago. Neanderthals and Denisovans then split from each other relatively soon after, estimated at 408,000 to 300,000 years ago. This early divergence aligns with fossil evidence from sites like Cima de los Huesos in Spain, where 430,000-year-old hominins show early Neanderthal traits, suggesting these features evolved gradually over at least 300,000 years in Europe. Post-split, the Neanderthal population expanded dramatically to an effective size of 16,000 individuals, indicating possible fragmentation into isolated subgroups with limited gene flow. In contrast, the Denisovan population remained smaller. The ancestral archaic population was consistently small, potentially due to social structure or selection pressures. According to other genetic estimates, the Denisovans were the first to diverge from the ancestral stock, somewhere between 765,000 and 550,000 years ago, likely around 650,000 years this group broke away from the population that would eventually yield both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Their exact point of origin remains elusive, but the distribution of Denisovan DNA in modern populations suggests they migrated eastward, occupying East Asia and Southeast Asia. Fossil evidence is scant, but what we do have is tantalizing. According to a recent report, co-authored by Chris Stringer, the million-year-old Yangtzean two-cranium of China represents a basal member of the Dragon Man and Denisovan lineage and probably lies close to the last common ancestor of that lineage and the lineage of Homo sapiens. According to another report co-authored by Chris Stringer, biogeographical mapping reveals asymmetric dispersal patterns of Homo species populations among Africa, Asia, and Europe. Asia acts as a primary sink receiving approximately 42% of total dispersal events, while contributing only about 24% to other continents. Africa serves as the main source, accounting for roughly 40% of all dispersals, while receiving around 22% from Asia and Europe. Y-chromosome analysis suggests that Neanderthals and modern humans diverged prior to 590,000 years ago, consistent with other evidence. Today, some researchers believe even earlier dates are possible for the elusive ancestor. A study comparing the teeth of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens proposed that ancestor may have lived at least 800,000 years ago, pushing its existence well beyond the age of Homo heidelbergensis, long considered a prime candidate. This finding casts doubt on heidelbergensis as ancestor, who may have looked more like us than like Neanderthals. Remarkably, some evidence suggests that this common ancestor was more modern than the groups that it gave birth to, suggesting a sort of reverse evolution that stunted humanity for hundreds of thousands of years. Our so-called modern face is an ancient face, noted Stringer. Paradoxically, it may be the Neanderthal face that is more derived or specialized. Whatever the case, sometime after the Denisovans peeled away, another group, drifted into Europe and Western Asia. These were the ancestors of the Neanderthals, and their roots may lie with populations like the Cima de los Huesos hominins of Atapuerca, Spain, dated to around 430,000 years ago. These early Neanderthals showed strong genetic and morphological divergence from both Denisovans and Homo sapiens. Nuclear DNA from Cima de los Huesos aligns them firmly with Neanderthals, but their mitochondrial DNA 
resembles that of Denisovans. This puzzling combination suggests that interbreeding with another archaic group, possibly Homo erectus, occurred before the Neanderthal lineage solidified. Their isolation was likely driven by glacial conditions that may have confined them to the Iberian Peninsula and nearby parts of Europe, cut off from populations further east and south. There, in that cold and brutal land, the Neanderthals evolved robust physiques, heavy brows, large brains, and a culture all their own. But for hundreds of thousands of years, they remained separate, evolving in parallel with their distant cousins to the east and south. According to Stringer's report, rather than a unidirectional out-of-Africa model, a multidirectional shuttle dispersal model better explains the complex phylogenetic relationships among African and Eurasian hominin species and or populations. Indeed, a single pure human form evolving in Africa and spreading out to occupy the whole world and replace all others is a theory rooted in colonialist ideology and manifest destiny. Where did our ancestors live during this split? Northeast Africa and the Middle East appear to have formed a single ecological zone, regularly linked by lowered sea levels and shared biomes. The Red Sea was not a significant barrier. This region could have served as a central hub, a homeland for the population that eventually became us. From here, our ancestors may have migrated into southern and eastern Africa, where populations remained isolated in refugia like the Ethiopian highlands, Lake Victoria Basin, or the forested slopes of the Rift Valley. What we call Homo heidelbergensis in Africa, also known as Homo rhodesiensis and Homo boduensis, was likely part of this story, but the name masks more than it reveals. Genetic evidence suggests that the African population around 600,000 years ago was already diverging from the groups in Europe and Asia. Some fossils assigned to Heidelbergensis in Africa may belong to our lineage. Others are clearly something else. The uncertainty in the fossil record mirrors our broader ignorance of this critical period. As of today, there is no universally agreed-upon fossil that represents the last common ancestor of all modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Complicating matters further is the discovery that West African populations today carry significant amounts of DNA from a fourth group, an archaic ghost lineage that appears to have also diverged from the main hominin line around 650,000 years ago. This unknown population, which may have persisted in parts of Africa until at least 124,000 years ago, interbred with Homo sapiens ancestors and contributed up to 19% of their genome in some populations. This suggests that Africa, far from being a single unified homeland for Homo sapiens, was a continent of remarkable complexity and population structure. Multiple hominin groups overlapped, interbred, and evolved independently for hundreds of thousands of years. And yet, despite this deep internal diversity, something eventually united them, the rise of modern Homo sapiens. But that unification would not happen for another half million years. All of this raises a central question. Who, or what, was the last common ancestor of humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans? Was it Homo heidelbergensis, as traditionally defined, or Homo antecessor, as proposed by the Grandolina team in Spain? Or was it some other as yet unnamed lineage that lived somewhere in southern Asia, perhaps in the Indian subcontinent, where environmental conditions remained relatively stable? Every answer leads to new mysteries. The Maurer mandible, dated to 600,000 years ago from Germany, is the oldest fossil widely accepted as Homo heidelbergensis. But genetic dating suggests the divergence between humans and Neanderthals was already underway before that time. This implies that Heidelbergensis was not the last common ancestor, but a sister lineage, or even multiple lineages grouped under a single misleading name. We are left with the unsettling possibility that the true common ancestor of our species and our cousins has left no fossil record. It may have lived in a region where preservation was poor, or where excavations have yet to be conducted, or it may be hiding in plain sight, misidentified, misclassified, or misunderstood. 
Despite the harsh conditions, the populations who survived the 630,000-year cold snap were not primitive brutes. Evidence from sites in the Middle East shows controlled fire use by 780,000 years ago. Peking man in East Asia, living between 500,000 and 750,000 years ago, made tools for woodworking, scraped hides for clothing, and possibly even drilled holes into objects for unknown purposes. In Southeast Asia, Homo erectus engraved zigzag patterns into shells with shark teeth and may have used barbed stingray stingers as fishing spears. These hominins were capable of complex behavior, perhaps even symbolic thought. If they could make boats, cross Wallace's line, or decorate shells, then they were more than mere survivors of an ice age. They were innovators, explorers, and storytellers. Today, we carry the echoes of these ancient splits in our DNA. Denisovan genes live on in the high-altitude adaptations of Tibetans and the immune systems of Melanesians. Neanderthal genes affect our hair, skin, and resistance to disease. Even the mysterious African ghost lineage left its mark. But the landscape of early human evolution is still only partially charted. We do not yet know how many human species once roamed the earth, how they were related, or where they lived during the darkest chapters of our prehistory. The split that began around 630,000 years ago fractured humanity into many branches, most of which ended in extinction. Ours did not, but it is shaped by those other branches in ways we are only beginning to understand. The Great Divergence was not a singular event. It was a drawn-out fragmentation driven by climate, geography, and isolation. The last common ancestor of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, may have lived in a time of immense peril, on a planet turning cold and dry. That ancestor's children scattered to the corners of the old world, not in triumph, but in desperation. And from that diaspora came the seeds of all who would follow. Four populations, four experiments in what it meant to be human. Only one survived to tell the tale. The others left behind a legacy written in bones, in tools, and in the DNA that whispers across generations. A mystery still unsolved. A question still waiting to be answered. Where did we come from? We still don't know. Our species was long thought to have evolved from a small population living in a tiny corner of Africa. Evidence countering this idea emerged two decades ago, but is only now being widely recognized. And then there were the ancestors of Homo sapiens, our own lineage. The genetic divergence between Homo sapiens and the Neanderthal Denisovan group is now estimated to have occurred between 550,000 and 765,000 years ago. Yet the fossil evidence of early Homo sapiens, or anything definitively in our lineage, remains frustratingly vague from this period.